What's inside of a .exe file? Yes, obviously it's a bunch of ones and zeros, it's made of data. But let's understand what this data means and what do the secrets of the exe mean for programmers today. If you open up a basic txt file in a hex editor, which lets us see each individual byte's value in a file, you'll be greeted with a text value of a certain encoding, either ASCII, UTF-8, UTF-16, or something else. And obviously all these different scripting language files, .c, .java, .js, or whatever, are all just plain text files with a fancy hat on. Opening up a PNG, a portable network graphics file, it gets a little more complex. You'll see a file header, followed mostly by color data of all the pixels in the image. So all files, everything on your computer, is just a bunch of data that gets interpreted by different pieces of software to have meaning. And even that software itself, which may come in the form of an exe, is just data. So what's inside of an exe then? Well, it's a file header and a bunch of machine code. Remember that a lot of modern programming is written in a high-level language like C, for example. Then, to get an executable file and actually run that C code, it first has to become assembly, then object code, sometimes referred to as machine code, and then run through a linker to reach the final executable. The CPU only speaks machine code, and humans don't. But instead of taking 8 years of machine in school, people have built software that takes text written in a certain style with rules that we call a programming language, and then translates that into something a computer can understand. So that's it, mystery solved. But every exe is a little different. See, back in the days of DOS, the exe had a format called 16-bit DOS MZ executable. Their header contained the letters MZ at the beginning, so you couldn't get it confused with a 16-bit new executable from 1985's Windows 1.0, which was marked with the letters NE at the beginning. With the release of OS 2 2.0 in 1992, the new 32-bit linear executable LX and mixed 16 32-bit linear executables LE were released. And then, EXEs finally started to get interesting in 1993 when Microsoft released Windows NT. Now the EXE format is called 32-bit portable executable and the file header starts with PE followed by two null bytes. It took a dozen years for them to come up with that one. But that's not even the real beginning of the EXE file anymore. Every EXE from here on out contains a real 16-bit DOS program that outputs the text, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Yes, Windows is just DOS at the core still. And if you open up any random EXE in a hex editor, there it is. MZ, that's the DOS format, this program cannot run in DOS mode. And then below that with PE00 is where modern Windows will start to read the program from. The PE format is also the first Windows executable to include fat binaries which is a library or program that has multiple instruction sets that work on different processor types. This is fairly common if not standard practice for most kinds of executables across all operating systems nowadays. This is how these executables are portable, by having ready different instructions for different CPUs. Think of it like taking a trip to Europe. You'll get around much faster by always speaking the native language of whatever country you happen to find yourself in. Similarly, programmers want computers to be as fast as possible, so the EXE is prepared with a fat dictionary to help it communicate no matter where it finds itself. So if the bulk of an EXE is a bunch of machine code, does that mean that EXEs can be created by directly writing machine code to a file? Theoretically, yes, and I say theoretically here because there's still a big difference from a high-level language and the end result. Remember, assembly, machine code, link it, and then run. But people do write programs directly in assembly, so it may be possible to skip all those steps above and just write out the binary CPU instructions inside of a file and call that an exe. But to test that out, I'd have to write a program in machine code for a modern processor, and I don't even know 64-bit assembly, so I don't think I'll be- So I first had to get familiar with x64 assembly, and it turns out that a lot of online resources just aren't that reliable anymore. Microsoft has moved some things around in the last few years, but eventually I did manage to get Visual Studio tuned to the right settings to run my assembly program. For reference, this is a blank C++ project that doesn't have any C++ in it. Now, better programmers than me have explained the ins and outs of modern CPU design and how assembly works, so I'm not going to go over all that. I'm simply going to write a little test program that adds two numbers together, and then crack open the final exe to see if I could recreate that by hand. So let's type this little section of code in here, and that should add 1337 and 278 together, and that will be the output of this program. So assemble and link that, and then here's the result of our equation in the exit code, so that worked fine. 
So let's take a look at this EXE. Oh, how big is that? 46 kilobytes. That seems like a lot of data just to add two numbers together. To get some perspective on this, the assembly code in main.asm is 128 bytes. That's 0.3% the size of the final EXE. So now I have to ask again, what is in this EXE? It starts with a typical EXE file header, MZ, classic, this program cannot run in DOS mode, then a whole bunch of other code and data that except for a very small part of this, I didn't write. So what is it? Well, like I mentioned before, it could be fat binaries, instructions for other CPU types, but I'm specifically targeting x64 processors, so maybe not. There is just a lot of blank filler data here, it seems like, and by doing a quick search, I can actually find the code that I wrote right here. It's just a few bytes long, and that's about 2.5k into the program as well. And all this other stuff, I think it's just a bunch of Windows stuff. Not Windows stuff, window stuff. If I pause the program in the middle of execution in Visual Studio, then I can go to debug Windows and then go down to disassembly, where I can check out a disassembled version of my code. And what's this? A whole bunch of code that creates a console window and sets everything up for me. Why is it here? Well, that's what I told the linker to do. I have the subsystem set to console mode, and so it gives me a console. The more I learn about these so-called low-level processes, the more abstraction I find in them. Assembly may feel low-level, but it's a long way away from the programming of the Altair 8800, where they would physically input every byte of the program one at a time. So while yes, people could write programs in machine code and slap a .exe on that file, I don't think anyone will anytime soon. So why even have executables then? Why not just go directly from code to the computers running your program? Well, sometimes it does work that way. Python is a classic example of a language that isn't pre-compiled before running. But since the CPU doesn't speak any language besides machine, it's stuck translating in real time, sentence by sentence, which is a lot slower than knowing everything you want to say beforehand, all bundled up in a nice EXE. Another one of the benefits of an executable file is obfuscation of code. If everything is written out in plain, readable text, then everyone from your customers to your rivals is reading exactly how you pulled off some programming trick. And there isn't a lot that would stop them from pulling the old control C, control V on you and passing it off as their own. In terms of speed and control, yes, writing assembly code can make your program faster. But, and I hate to say it, computers are so fast today that not everything has to be optimized to the nth degree. The abstraction of data types and the special syntax that compiled languages provide allow for programmers to do much more with greater force than is possible in machine code or even assembly. Hardware I.O., graphical user interfaces, reading and writing files, networking are all made so much easier the further you go from the raw metal. What's inside of an EXE is decades of legacy and innovation. It's the end result of taking human logic and turning it into computer logic through a series of different levels of abstraction and disabstraction. It's a whole bunch of CPU instructions that aren't allowed to run in DOS mode. Everybody DOS now! Everybody DOS now!